In the months preceding the start of analysis in SBT, CD was engaging in a high frequency of severe aggression, self-injurious behavior, and property destruction. Most frequent and disruptive was CD's spitting behavior, which occurred quickly in response to task demands and diverted attention. He would often give himself a bloody nose and spit blood at staff. His classroom was rearranged to prevent him from spitting at peers, and physical restraints were often utilized to protect him from self-injurious behavior. As a result, staff spent the majority of their day wearing gowns and masks and attempted to reduce all demands. Even with low demands and attempting to follow his lead, spitting and other problem behavior continued. However, through the PFA process, we were able to tease out subtle EOs such as diverted attention and create a context that he enjoyed and problem behavior was highly unlikely to occur. For CD, walks are a significant part of what it means to be happy, relaxed, and engaged. At first, when he asked for walks, I assumed that I did not have the correct reinforcers in the room. However, we included the walks, and I learned that the reinforcement context does not have to be constrained to the treatment space. So from analysis through the SPT, this was something that we had to take into consideration. <laughs> You got it, buddy. It's yeah. 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 This next clip is only a few seconds, but it shows us walking during the reinforcement context. I present the EO, he quickly admits the FCR, and we return to walking and reinforcement. Starfish away. Yeah, and, and the stretch too. Alright, close the bend. Alright, come on over and get ready for work. Do it. Ah. Oh, that's good getting ready. Hey, you did it. Is that? You got ready for work. Is that? I'm so proud of you. You pulled right up to The next clip is an example of Cab 2 getting ready for work while roaming. Sometimes we would transition all the way back to the treatment space as part of CAB 2, or we would reinforce transitioning some of the way back, or we would transition to a novel space. Either way, the time was staff-led. As we continued with the SBT, it was always CD's preference to come to the sessions. Even as his expected participation in academic work increased significantly, he still chose to be there. His choice reflects the priority that meaningful outcomes can be televisable from start to finish. Can you put Mr. Uh, Patrick Starfish away? That's so. Yep. Yeah. Yep, and the helicopter and the worm. Yep. I got it. And then close the bin, please. Okay, come on over. Get ready for work. Yeah, work! That's cool. Okay, come on up. Ah. Oh, shit. Okay, that was great, and now we're going to do 
Throughout analysis and SBT, we received weekly support from Dr. Ditti and Rajaraman. Dr. Rajaraman reviewed video of our sessions and provided effective feedback, such as identifying the conditions in which we should progress the EO instead of prompting, or letting CD fill the space with his behavior during reinforcement. Occasionally, I would present a question to CD when it would have been more effective to make a comment. We are grateful for Dr. Rajaraman's assistance with the many subtle adjustments to make for quality interventions. The next few clips show CD in cab six of his academic branch. He's engaging in several minutes of work while being challenged with new material. The significance of this moment cannot be overstated. Prior to treatment, any task demand quickly evokes spitting and often severe SIV. We were walking on eggshells and we were often tempted to conceptualize his behavior in ways that weren't as simple and straightforward as a skill deficit. Completing four minutes, five minutes, or eight minutes of work while smiling at the end was just a hopeful idea before treatment began. The next steps involved generalizing his skills to his classroom teacher and to other settings. Also, we started new care branches, which included more functional skills, such as folding laundry and making deliveries for classrooms. For CD, the start of analysis and SBT process was correlated with a significant reduction in problem behavior outside of the sessions. This welcome change was interesting to us as it occurred almost immediately, long before his new skills were developed or targeted for generalization. Most notably, no physical restraints were utilized to control episodes of unsafe behavior once the process began. We viewed this process as giving CD an opportunity to experience a time when spitting, aggression, and other problem behaviors were no longer necessary for him to be happy and effective in his school day. Oh, nice.